It's a beautiful spring morning this morning and we're only a week away from the equinox and that's got me thinking about solar power again. And this is what I'm going to play with in the sunshine. The um, cheap PWM solar charge controller but this is the lithium iron version. Uh, 7.4 volts so that's two cells at 3.7 volts. Uh, 3 amps so I have some cells which you've seen before and I've got a battery holder so let's start plug them in and see what we get so this allows me to show you a nice new toy I've got a Porter Pow premium USB and DC power monitor um, we can see the screen there it's 8.22 volts coming from these two lithium ion batteries and there's very little current being drawn at the moment because the only thing plugged in is the solar charge controller but this is going to allow me to see how the solar charge controller behaves with lithium ion batteries because my understanding is you shouldn't be trickle charging lithium ion cells uh, once they get up to 4.2 volts each and obviously we're a little bit shy from that at the moment at 8.2 overall 4.1 for each battery but when I plug some solar panels into here and we get up to 8.4 volts will the current cut off entirely or will it try and trickle, trickle charge Okay, so when you're charging a lithium-ion battery, if we forget the first section of this graph here, and this is taken from the TP4056 datasheet, uh, which is something I've shown before in my video about charging lithium-ion batteries on the cheap. The initial charging phase is here, constant current, and you keep a constant current while the battery voltage increases. And... That's not difficult to do in solar due to the fact that your solar panel, when connected directly to the battery, will take on the same voltage as the battery, or ever so slightly higher, and will deliver all the current it can. However, in the solar charge controller, this line isn't going to be quite so flat, because if you imagine the sun goes behind a cloud and it drops down, and then the cloud edge effect, it might go even higher, and back down so this flat line on a solar charge controller is probably not going to be flat at all but once we've got to the end of the constant current phase of charging and we reach 4.2 volts on the cell the current should dip down and the charger should reduce the current until it gets to about 10 percent here or 10 percent of the current it first started delivering or 10% I think actually of the capacity of the cell and then the charging circuit should turn off entirely leaving the battery at 4.2 volts with no load and no charge going into it and critically here no trickle charge. Okay so let's plug in the solar positive in nice and tight and the solar negative so the solar light illuminates and straight away we can see the charge light went on and we're delivering 500 and odd milliamps into the batteries and they've already got to eight and a half volts which suggests that they're on 4.25 each which is a bit high let's get a multimeter and test that so I'll try and get into each cell individually there's one using the connector here so that one's at four point one three volts and this one's at four point two two 
So that one is getting a little bit overcharged, I'd suggest, and unfortunately, although I charged both of these batteries before we started, it looks like they're slightly unbalanced. So herein lies the first problem, the fact that these two cells can be at slightly different voltages. Let's suggest that this one's at 4 volts um, and this one's at 4.3 volts and the solar charge controller will continue to charge because overall they're less than 8.4 volts combined. So we need to think about how we can protect ourselves because lithium ion batteries, when you overcharge them, um, expand, vent, sometimes explode, so we need to be careful. So I'm going to use one of these battery protection systems. I won't call it a battery, full battery management system um, because this is all just about protecting the cells. Um, and it's got a couple of ICs on here. This 8205A, which I believe is just a dual MOSFET um, to actually switch off the charging circuit. And this tiny little six pin chip here, which is the HY2120. So here's the data sheet for the Hycon technology HY2120 two-cell lithium-ion, lithium polymer, battery pack protection IC. And if we go through here, there's some interesting information. First of all, on the internals, I guess, of that chip, and it's using op-amps to detect um, over-discharge, over-charge on each cell over here, for example. Um, we can see that mine is the CB version, so it cuts out at 4.28 volts per cell, and the over discharge um, cuts in at 2.9 volts, which is about right. And a bit further down, I think somewhere, we can see a connection example circuit. So we've got the two cells over here, some resistors and capacitors, and then into the chip. And this is that dual MOSFET that we also saw on the board there. And the idea is that these MOSFETs can stop um, overcharge and over discharge by disconnecting when it detects that within the cells. And there's also a small current shunt here to check for um, over current. So I've stuck the little protection circuit on the side of the battery holder with a bit of double sided tape. I've got battery positive, battery negative over here, and the midpoint. There on the yellow wire and then the main output there from P plus and P minus. Okay so let's plug in the battery. There we are. And um, we're getting 8.317 volts. And let's turn the charge controller on. That's on now. Difficult to see it from your point of view I'm afraid. We can see straight away we're getting up to 8.4 volts as we deliver just 100 milliamps into these batteries which are full. And unfortunately it does look like we're still delivering current into these batteries. 3 milliamps so far. Milliamp hours I should say. Uh, just sort of 20 to 30 milliamps being delivered at any one time. But that does suspiciously look like a trickle charge to me. So I've moved things around on the uh, bench here a little bit. So hopefully you can see what's going on. We're still at 8.34 volts. Um, it is still delivering charge every so often. You can see it now on the oscilloscope there. A small pulse width. And that's a real shame because it has been doing this for quite some time. And I don't think there's any current shunt in here to detect that we've got down to just 10% uh, charging rate. So it does look like it's trickle charging these batteries and that's no good for lithium ion as far as I've read. I'll link to a post at the Battery University uh, 
below the video. That's a really interesting read about charging lithium ion cells. And I don't suppose it would have been difficult to program something like that into the pick, whether that was through a current shunt and working out that 10% value, or whether we just got the batteries up to 8.4 volts, kept them there for 10 minutes or so, and then cut off the charging entirely until it got down to about 7.9, 7.8 volts before charging these cells again. I think that was achievable. So unfortunately I can't really recommend this lithium ion version of the solar charge controller. I know that this comes in 8.4 volts and 11.1 volts for three cell systems and presumably that's programmed in exactly the same way. And that's a real shame. So if you are going to buy one of these solar charge controllers, stick to the lead acid ones for the moment. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.